going to do another stoichiometry problem here. A component of acid rain is nitric acid, which forms when NO2, which is a pollutant, reacts with oxygen and water according to this simplified equation. The generation of the electricity used by a medium-sized home produces about 16 kilograms of NO2 per year. Assuming there's adequate oxygen and water, what mass of nitric acid in kilograms can form from this amount of NO2 pollution? So there's lots of words in that problem. The words give it a story, give it some relevance perhaps. Most of the words can be ignored when you're actually solving the problem. It's the numbers. So let's find the numbers and make some sense out of them. So here we've got 16 kilograms of NO2. I'm going to use my balanced chemical equation to organize the numbers. So under NO2, I'm going to write the number 16 kilograms, because that's what they're telling me. I've got 16 kilograms of NO2. Then they're saying, well, assuming there's plenty of oxygen and water, which, you know, in the air there probably is, the question is, what mass of HNO3 in kilograms can form from this amount of NO2? So the question is, how much HNO3 and the unit requested is kilograms? You see how I pulled that out of there? Interpreting the story problem is a challenge for many students. And if you need help with that, please ask me. OK, so now we've got a mass of one substance, and we need the mass of another substance, and we have a balanced chemical equation. This is going to be stoichiometry. And what is the usual path for stoichiometry? Grams to moles to moles to grams. But this time they didn't give us grams, they gave us kilograms. And they want kilograms at the end. So could we do kilograms to grams, to moles to moles, to grams to kilograms? Sure. We're just going to add a little step on each end. There's multiple ways that you can do this. Um, I'm looking at this slide and I'm thinking, I don't feel like I have enough room on here. And I'm thinking this, this stuff at the top, not so super useful, so I'm going to get rid of it. My magic wand. Just to give myself some space to write. OK, so my path, I'm going to write it out because we're still new at this is going to be kilograms of NO2 to grams of NO2 to moles of NO2 to moles of what I'm trying to find, HNO3. Oops, I need moles. Moles of HNO3 to grams of HNO3 to kilograms. I just barely fit it on there. Physically writing out the path is very helpful. Now, dimensional analysis. I'm going to set up all the units in a string, and then I'll put numbers in, and then I can get my calculator out. Each of these little steps is not difficult. The trick is learning how to put them all together successfully. So I have 16 kilograms of NO2. That's what I'm starting with, 16 kilograms of NO2. And then I need grams of NO2. And I'm going to have kilograms of NO2 on the bottom, because those are going to cancel. From grams of NO2, I'm going to moles. grams of NO2 will be on the bottom, so the units work out. Next up is 
moles of HNO3 and moles of NO2 is on the bottom. And then I've got grams of HNO3 and moles of HNO3 on the bottom. And last, I'm very impressed with myself for fitting that on there. HNO3 kilograms divided by grams of HNO3. Any questions about how I did that part? Now we need to put numbers in these things. Because the key to dimensional analysis is that each of these terms that we're multiplying by is numerically equal to 1, which means the stuff above the line has to be equal to the stuff below the line. So again, we can do these in any order. I like the middle one first because it comes from the balanced chemical equation. So I look at my equation. I've got 4 moles of NO2 and I've got four moles of HNO3. They each have a four in front of them. So I'm going to put those fours in here. Yes, you could cancel them out. I, I don't bother. I think it's clearer if we actually just write the numbers in. Um, I think the next easiest one is the kilogram to gram conversion. Here, the prefix kilo is in the denominator. That means I need to put the numerical equivalent on the other side of the line. Kilo means 10 to the minus third. Sorry, 10 to the plus three. One kilogram is then one times 10 to the third grams. And then over here, I have the opposite conversion. I have kilo on top. One kilogram is one times 10 to the third grams. What's going to happen with those conversion factors? They're going to cancel out, aren't they? So there are some little shortcuts you can take. If you, if you look ahead and you recognize, well, I'm going to do a kilograms to gram, and then I'm going to go grams back to kilograms. Those are going to cancel out. You could leave those steps off. But I'm not going to do that in my example, because if, if you don't recognize that, you can do it this way, and you'll be just fine. How, what do I do for this grams of NO2 and moles of NO2? Molar mass. So I'm going to need the molar mass of NO2. I'm also going to need the molar mass of HNO3. I am looking also at this number I'm starting with, 16 kilograms, two sig figs. So I'm thinking, if my molar masses have four sig figs, that's going to be plenty good. I'm not going to bother with all the digits on the periodic table. I'm going to use the four-digit ones that I have in my head. If I had a much more precise number, maybe it was 16.7342, then I'd want to use all the data that was available to me. So NO2. Well, that's a new sound in the hallway. Somebody's baby is very unhappy. So NO2, 14.01 plus 2 times 16.00. 46.01. The units on molar mass are grams per mole. So up here, I've got one mole of NO2 is equivalent to 44, sorry, 46. I was thinking CO2, 46.01. And then I also need to calculate the molar mass of nitric acid, HNO3. So that is 1.008 plus 14.01 plus 3 times 16, 63.018 grams per mole. 
So one mole, 63.018 grams. Any questions? Now we got this big, long, scary looking equation. Just get out your calculator. Go left to right, top to bottom as you go. There's no need to write down intermediate values with this method. You just um, calculate and write down an answer at the end. So I've got 1 times 1 EE3 divided by 46.01 times 4 divided by 4 times 63.018 divided by 1 EE3. And the answer I'm coming up with on my calculator is 21.9145 blah 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 kilograms. Uh, I need two significant figures, so my answer is going to be 22 kilograms of nitric acid. Question? When you get one like this, 4-4, four, four, can you just ignore it? Yeah, the 4 and the 4, you can cancel that out. And so you might look at this and say, oh, well, 4 over 4, that cancels out. And the 1 times 10 to the 3rd and the 1 times 10 to the 3rd cancel out. You don't actually have to put them in your calculator. Any other questions? Just be careful when you do that because sometimes we just glance at things too quickly and we cancel out things that really don't cancel out.